witch. Team are the best and the better than the best and the fire team beat your chest. He's a schoolboy football. A team could rise and a team could fall. But they never will know until the whistle blows around. Come enjoy the show. He's a schoolboy football. He's a well, we are at a place that we have never been before as far as broadcasting schoolboy football in the island of Jamaica. And we are ready for this battle in the Issa Da Costa Cup. Fogo Road High will be on showcase uh, on the, the, the bright sunshine here. And they'll be facing a former winner in this competition in Garvey Maceo High. The teams will make their way. They are making their way out to the middle. And we are anticipating a really good one. As far as rivalries in this parish is concerned, they are usually quite close. And I can tell you that the parish of Clarendon is usually of a very high standard in the rural area uh, competition. And uh, in this particular group, uh, the teams are not too far apart. Chris Taylor, your thoughts on this matchup? Yeah, dominant parish, Clarendon. Majority titles in terms of the, the Costa Cup titles in the rural areas and Garvey Maceo on top of the group two-time champions 2007 and 2021 and so far they have been dominant in this group three wins from four as we've seen But yet Fogo Road getting a little bit closer a 1-0 loss in the opening match of this season And even though they have been dominated by Garvey Maceo over the years since their entrance into the, the Costa Cup in 2012 they have been formidable opponents of recent. And of course, from a neutral's perspective, you'll certainly be hoping that Fogo Road put up a good fight today against this Cleo Clark captain, Garvey Maceo, who have already scored some 14 goals in their four matches. As we take a look at the officials, we know that Okito Nicholson is the man in charge. Adrian Taylor and Mojali Gale will assist him. Otis Hamilton is the fourth official for this afternoon. As we take a look at the starting lineup for Foga Road, they are going with a 4-3-3 a formation. Chris Taylor, Javan Wheatley in goal. Daly Galbert, Jave Cross, and Bernard Clark. They are the back four in the middle of the park. Delton Brooks alongside uh, Captain Brady Reed and Javon McGee. And up top, uh, we have Javon Hales down the middle, and he's flanked by uh, Neon Clark and Nevar Brooks. They'll be hoping, hoping to get amongst the goals for the road. Look out for the player to watch Nevar Brooks. One goal, one assist to him so far. Hales and Armstrong. The other scores, of course, Armstrong seat on the bench to start this one. For Garvey Maceo, they'll be going with a 3-4-3 formation. Uh, Chris Mar Maxwell is between the six. Orlando Lee, Blake Robinson and Wilton Williams, the back three. In the middle of the park, we have McKinley, the number three. Uh, Devani McIntosh, number two on the flank. In the middle, Conroy Williams and Anthony Sinclair up top. Uh, Christopher Mundell, you'll know his name. He has a goal to his name so far this season. Clear Clark has six goals to his name. He'll be playing on the right-hand side. And Delana Thompson is the new boy in the number nine for this Garvey Maceo team. Yeah, Garvey Maceo looking to go deeper than they did last season when defending their title. A bit disappointing how they fell away in the competition in the end, but Cleo Clark back in form. And as I said, six goals in just four matches for him. 41 goals in his DaCosta Cup career, Cleo Clark. And Fogo Road was certainly looking out for him because he did score that one goal in that 1-0 win in September. Well, we are underway here at Fogo Road High, and it's the hosts in action against Garvey Maceo. It was a tight encounter between these two earlier in the season, and Garvey Maceo eked out a 1-0 win. And uh, I was speaking to Merrin Gordon before the game, and he said it was one of those games where Garvey Maceo didn't take their chances, and if you allow Fogo Road to get into the game, they will. And they did well to hold them at bay for much of the game. And uh, it was... Uh, Clark, who provided the breakthrough, one of six goals that he would have scored so far this season, has been one of those performers. Six out of Clark. 14 to A. Has been one of those performers, Clark. You did mention that he has scored, what, 41 goals in his career so far? As, uh, that's a, a heavy collision. Clark involved. Yep. And although Clark remains d down, it's a uh, goalkeeper who gets the benefit of, of the doubt as we take a look at the replay here well
still needing some attention Clark from the bench and they wouldn't want him to remain down the goalkeeper is also down and requiring some attention as well yeah the foul went against Clark just remember for backing into the goalkeeper Clark a big deal for this Garvey Mosier team especially if they are looking to go deep into this year's competition I thought underperformed a bit last year here's the infringement and yeah backed into the keeper there instead of playing the ball and that's why the foul went against him rightfully so from referee Nicholson but, yeah, but, but, but we're not used to seeing him down like that it's it should be a little bit concerning for the Garvey Mosier team Premier League players well experienced with Cavalier. Cleo Veer Clark. as well. Veer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fifth season now, Cleo Clark. And as we said, 41 goals. Started out in 2018 with four, then nine in 2019. Then in the season winning year, scored 16 goals behind Gavin Maceo front man and big striker Gregor, Gregor Cousins, Cousins yep. who was a 20 goal man that season well that was a strong team yeah and in 13 finished the season on a high did Cleo Clark but for a lot of the season just wasn't up to his usual standard and he I think did that have a lot of assists though last season to give him credit a lot of footballers would would uh, crave for those numbers to be fair finished with 13 in the end and eight assists but as you said, in, in the business part early on, where you were really looking for him to take the bull by the horn, as they would say, uh, yeah, underperformed. In that second season where he scored nine goals, he scored one of the goals of the season uh, at Manchester High. Ball was played through to him, it was slightly behind him. He used his heel to propel the ball forward in, in one swoop and went on to score. It was just a magnificent strike. And, I think he was what 13 14 years old at the time 15 at the time he was he still has more time yeah he can come back next year if he wants ball played inside the box at the back post Mundell controls sends it inside a chance over the top the number nine Delana Thompson was right there tried to get over it as much as he possibly could have but couldn't quite keep it down that would have been spectacular had it gone in yeah nice pass by christopher mundle as well went for the ac acrobatic finish thompson <sighs> could have probably stood his ground and side footed it lots of power but not the accuracy hales trying to get there for foga road as they try to get into this game but he's all alone up front needs some support and didn't quite have it and had nowhere to go It's a different vibe during the week there when you go to a school and you see the spectators, especially in the rural era, they have permit fencing all around the ground. And it's the same here at Foga Road with school just being out, spectators all around the ground as you take a look at the infringement there once again, the free kick going in favor of Foga Road. This one is punted long. It's not a bad looking ball inside the area though. Gav Maceo having to handle it. The captain trying to get into the way, Reed. And the Gav Maceo should be able to come out of the own defensive third with a throw. Jason Clausen just uh, withstanding the heat. Yeah. Foga Road last year was their best showing. They finished third in their group. Came down to their last match of the season where they needed a win against Veer to qualify for the second round for the first time. And they lost by five goals to nil, I think it was. They can be considered to be uh, one of the spoilers in the Issa Da Costa Cup competition. They haven't been able to go through to the, to the next round as the ball is over the top looking for Clark. Cuts inside Clark. He can shoot. Clark still. Clark, he should have buried it. He maneuvered himself into a brilliant position to apply a more accurate shot than he eventually did. 
Bowler's over the top. Gorski to clear Clark. Composed up to the point of the shot, but should have at least hit the target. Kept his eyes on it. Cutting well here. Good change of pace. Then onto the right foot. Just a drop of the shoulder, but yeah. Leaning back a bit. Didn't get over it enough. And unfortunately for him, well over the top. But warning signs early for Fogo Road. As I said, they were a difficult team to break down last season, Fogo Road. And, and in the first game. Yeah, against the group leaders in Garvey. Fogo Road actually had a player last season who was on the Alder Costa team, Chadrick Woolcock. Yeah, had quite a few man of the match performances, did Woolcock, as this one is deflected and over the top as well. No it's longer a part of the squad, of course. No, no, he's not. But great to see a, a player from Fogo Road. They've only come into being since 2012. I was see Meron Gordon, the head coach at, at Garvey Maceo and the assistant coach with the Jamaica Reggae Boys at the senior level as well. Before we came on here, we got the breaking news that Lauren Donaldson will no longer be with the national women's coach. There was a time when Moran Gordon uh, was considered to have been recalled to the national women's program. Lots of success at the school level with Lennon Hyde was. As well. mm -hmm. Lennon. Here is the corner kick. It's a good looking one, you know. Hitting the woodwork. Mm. Off the upright. But yeah, did at Lennon and then as well at Garvey Maceo because they actually have a pretty strong female football team now as well at Garvey Maceo. So obviously his influence contributing to that. Well, here's Fogo Road. Trying to come forward along that left-hand side. Could he keep the play now? But there was a, a deflection before Daly could gather it. Foga still trying to Foga Road still trying to settle. on the play Fogaro they have played four games only conceded four goals so as you see the first yellow card of the game but yeah it just shows how good defensively they have been and how hard to break down they are <laughs> we'd say that's a professional foul yellow card picked up by cross You'll have to be careful now playing at the centre back role. Not often you see a number seven at centre back. But yeah, four goals in four games just adds to the improvement we've seen from Fogo Road over the years, over the seasons. And it's still encouraging, even though they sit in fourth position. Free kick from way out. Oh, yes, rifle that, you know, but. <laughs> Again, going over the top, but ambitious effort there from way out yeah came from Malik Robinson one of the veterans in the Garvin Maceo setup but we've heard the name Fuga Road high on quite a few occasions across different sporting disciplines in Jamaica. Of course, they've come more and more into the fore as far as Champs is concerned and their track and field program, trying to do the same thing with their football program. And they're getting there. You mentioned before that last year they would have finished third in their group in the Nacosta Cup. Yeah, and a favorable result in their last game, they would have been through to the second round which would have been a big deal for them. And as I said, a representative on the all the Costa team as well. So positive signs for this team, this school in South Central Jamaica. Yeah, it's not too far from the newly built highway. Well, 
well. This one is flicked over the top. Mundell is giving chase. They need to clear. And they do. But Gav Maceo, well, referee says play on. And they do. Fogaro doing really well. They switch the play. Lovely intelligent stuff. Can they advance now? Ball over the top. Clark is giving chase, couldn't quite reach him. The captain has it. And that's Reed. McGee. Sending it out wide. Clark on it. Clark. Oh, he's skillful, Clark. Couldn't quite get it back. And Gav Maceo with a throw in the own defensive third. Well, there's a hopeful ball over the top. Clark is giving chase, trying to win the header. Thompson. Mundell. Mundell with the chip inside the area. The keeper, oh, that's a good catch, you know. Lovely work by Javon Wheatley. It's a nice buzzer on the ground, Chris Taylor. It, it's a different vibe when you come to the schools during the week and the youngsters are able to come out and support, but there's so much activity around the playing field. We mentioned before that they have a, a strong track program. There's track training that's going off in the distance as well. And it's the first time they're hosting, Donald. There's, yes. there's a serious buzz because of that as well. A this televised is, game. Yeah, this is new for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a televised game, of course. And lots of teachers if you look around the ground as well, supporting the school. And they're supporting Clark, who plays that one inside. And that's also a good collection by Chris Mar Maxwell. And they come streaming forward now, Gavin Maceo. Thompson will get there. The flag stays down. He needs support. He has kept it in play, but he has lost possession. Fogaro, they've done well try to set free Javon Hales but Gavin Maceo will come forward again McKenley with the dink inside and uh, the flag going up offside hold against Thompson who had made the run wide Ball over the top. Gav Maceo in possession. McKinley does well, finding Mundell. Mundell utilizing his pace. Still doesn't have the strength. The diminutive number seven. Played Premier League football as well on the books of Vere United last season, Christopher Mundell. Doesn't gain any height, Mundell. Still very short, but you're telling me that you think he has lost height. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he looked shorter than I remember. Very quick in the wide areas, though. Mundell uh, could pass as well from those wide areas, as we saw in the first five minutes, where he delivered that best chance so far for Gavi Maceo. Between him or Neon Clark of Fogo Road, I'm not sure who is the smaller of the two. And here is Clark. Well, he, has, he allows it to go by. And that goes into no man's land. But yeah, Clark is the one who wears number 11 for Foga Road. Asked to play out wide. Foga Road playing very deep, so very hard for them to advance the ball. 
at one stage, 10 of their 11 players behind the half line. Ball touched out wide. The flag stays down. Fogo Road trying to advance, but that's some good defending there. And Williams will have it. And Williams strides forward. Well, that was more in hope than anything else. Garvey must have certainly out muscling them so far. Yeah. A lot more physical, the Cubans. And they aren't, and they are not one of the bigger teams in, in the Costa Cup, we can tell you that. Yeah, but sturdy on the ball, firm. They are. And, and you're seeing the difference in there. So most of the 50 50 challenges being won by the team in yellow. To be a cross. We'll try to make it difficult for the government to defense. Wasn't successful in that endeavor. Yeah, and even Maxwell is between its sticks. Very short for a goalkeeper, must be said. Yeah. Wheatley on the other side is much bigger. The Foga Road custodian, yeah, the flag should be up. But Clark realized and didn't make an attempt. Interception made, Mundell has it. see Foga Road utilize the midfield a bit more. Oh, that's a lovely turn from Mundell. He's heading to the byline under pressure all the time from Clark. And it goes behind for a goal kick in the end. Yeah, disappointing delivery. Generally a really good center of gravity. There's Michael Ricketts, the president of the GFF. Having made a big call just a, a couple hours before in removing Lauren Donaldson as a national women's head coach this after they would have progressed beyond the group stages at the yeah. FIFA Women's World Cup making history yeah it's a big call Chris Taylor would love to hear your thoughts on it just missing out in terms of um, Olympic qualification going down to Canada that was always going to be a difficult proposition always. another whistle goes Canada one of the highest ranked teams in the world currently 10th but has been as high as fourth in the world and defending gold medalist as well at the Olympics there's a the late challenge I was never going to get past Oki, Okita Nicholson mm -hmm. There's a delivery to the edge of the box that's easily handled by Gavin Maceo. Oh, that's a lovely second touch. You know, clear clock on the run. Thompson is there for company, but he may not need him, and he's tripped. It's a free kick on the edge of the box for Gavin Maceo, and the yellow card. Well, does it stay in the referee's pocket? Well, Who was given chase there? I I was wondering if maybe it was Cross who would have been in some trouble there. He's on a yellow card. Yeah, he is. And I think referee Nicholson realized it. it was Cross uh, yeah. and didn't go to the pocket. But that's got to be a yellow card, though, Donald. Just look at this here. Took a tug there. Can't be a... Oh, it wasn't Cross, you know. What was it? That's got to be a yellow card. It is Cross. Didn't play the ball. And certainly, as you would say, another professional foul from the number seven. And he's lucky to be on the park. I... I I do think that's a second yellow, though. Mm. <laughs> and Clark going through and goal. I can understand that wouldn't be a straight red because there are other defenders around. But Cross has got to be off of the park. Uh, it's been a day of big calls, Chris Taylor. <laughs> and that's another one. In the meantime, a free kick for Gav Maceo. It's Clark who is behind this. What can be done with this set piece. The wall has been constructed. Here's the kick. Wonderful. Well, the captain comes up trumps again. And against Foga Road, he scores again. His second against them this season, his seventh this season. And Claire Clark again proving to be the difference maker. Yeah, 
Fogo Road lucky to still have 11 players on the park, but Cleo Clark makes them pay nonetheless to the near post. And unfortunately for Wheatley, he couldn't get across in time. Did get across, but a weak left hand to it. And Clark celebrates his seven. Yeah, he enjoys playing against Fogo Road. The Cubans are ahead again. Too easy, though. Really too easy. 42 in his Da Costa Cup career, Cleo Clark. Wow. Thompson again finding Clark. Clark looking for options here. Not quite sure what option that would have been, but Fogo Road looking to respond. Trying to switch the play to Clark, who is waiting for it, but uh, doesn't quite reach him. McKinley switching the play. Oh, Clark has acres of space, and what a first takedown! Clark on his left, inside Clark has an opportunity to score, and uh, again. Denied by the keeper. Wheatley getting a hand to it, a stronger hand on this occasion. And it goes behind for a corner kick. Yeah, one of the passes of the season. What a beautiful pass. Lovely technique from the wide ear to Clark. And yeah, his first touch was scrumptious. And then the touch by Wheatley just pushing it over the bar. Fogger Road. They have to be careful there. There are so many gaps at the back in the last couple of attacks by Gav Maceo. Really could drive a couple of buses through them as this one is sent in at the back post. And again, a free header at the back post. And it goes behind for a goal kick and the players will pause for the water break. Gav Maceo in front, clear clock. The difference maker so far in this matchup with Fogger Road. And the water break coming at the right time. Humid conditions here in Clarendon. And, and you know, I just thought, like maybe 30 seconds ago, the, the, the breeze started to pick up, and I was like, yeah, the players will enjoy that. Nice wind coming across the ground. But as you heard Gerard in his preview, 33 degrees Celsius. Wow. Good start for the Cubans, though. That goal from Cleo Clark. Unlocking the Fogo Road defense. Again, and luckily for them, Wheatley was there on that occasion to tip over. But Fogo Road sitting a bit too deep for my liking. Need to be a little more enterprising. This was a goal from the free kick. It was a foul on Clark as well from Cross, who was on a yellow card, lucky. And Nicholson, well, in a favorable mood, Okita Nicholson decided not to send him off and give him the second yellow, but Clark made the most of it. Seven on the season, two against Fogo Road, one nil, Garvey Maceo lead. I think if Cross sneezes the next time, he's gonna be sent <laughs> off because he was lucky to still be on the park after the challenge on Gav Maceo's number 10. Yeah. Is about to resume. Government are dominating the possession. Fogaro still trying to make something out of this.
Mondo, nicely done. McKinley, Mondo continuing his run, but McKinley deciding to go inside. Sinclair. Robinson inside. Williams. Wilton Williams. McIntosh. So, a change is going to be made. Are you surprised? No, I'm not. Javier Cross, who yeah. was lucky to still be on the park, is taken out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think the coach knew what was coming as well. He was lucky to remain on the park after that second tackle that led to the goal for Cleo Clark and not taking any further chances. Was Coach Clausen. That's what you call reading the tea leaves. Yeah. And Clark, experience, been around a long time at this level, Cleo Clark. Pinpointing the defender in terms of him being on a yellow card and running at him specifically to expose him. And they paid off. Well, here they come again. Ball. Oh, that's a lovely ball. Snap through. And uh, couldn't quite keep it in play. Clear Clark. Yeah, but Canroy Williams disappointing that pass. Overweighted yeah. the pass, but his first touch was excellent. Christopher Mundler switched to the right-hand side, cutting in, and that pass into him was very good. But Williams needed to do better. Probably was a bit surprised in how quickly it got to him. Yeah. Wasn't him to turn his body to shoot, try to play in Clark, but overcooked the pass. It was always going to be a difficult battle over on the far side. Clearance eventually made. Williams again trying to switch the play for McKinley, who's applying the pressure. Mundle almost bundled off the ball. Free kick to Gavin Maceo. So, free kick to Gav Maceo. I think they've worked it out. Almost. Fogaro did well to read it.
government says they are pushing themselves to be right up there in the Lacoste Cup this season. And you think that they have the personnel to do so, including McKinley on this left-hand side. Can they take advantage of this set piece? Gava Maceo. Ball comes inside and overcooked. McKinley, ball sent inside at the penalty, inside the penalty area and uh, came Fogo Road High did well to avert the danger. Yeah, Wheatley, though a bit tentative for me, should have just come and collected that. I was very unsure about his six yard area. Gav Maceo building again and McKinley is on it. Just running into some traffic on that occasion. Trying to stick to the basics for the road high. Oh, that was lovely skill. Really and truly it was. And he was brought down. He had to be brought down after that, I suppose. That is our player to watch, Navarre Brooks. They're number 10, Foga Road. Jared Morris, it is downstairs. He has a report for us, Jared. Donald, and I know that you and Chris were having a little bit of discussion about what caused that force change cross coming off. Of course, you know, he was in some car trouble, but after some conversation with the coach, it was because of a groin injury. He was actually complaining of discomfort in his groin, and that's what made the coach make the change. So, yeah, no car trouble. Coach is not worried about that. Rather, it was an injury to the player that made him come off. I reckon that he would have gotten that injury as he was chasing Clark. The same incident in which he was lucky to not receive a second yellow card. So it might be a blessing in disguise. Unfortunate the injury, but it was a red card waiting to happen. Fogo Road to the corner kick. Keeper comes out, couldn't get there. The header is wide, you know. It's the captain who was there. And he is disgusted with himself for not converting Brady Reed. Well. Rose well did Reed. Mm -hmm. Nice delivery into the area, telling ball. Disappointed not to hit the target. Oh, and you had to, the ball hit him, didn't it? Yeah. Didn't Kept it. his eyes on it, but yeah. Glanced off the side of his head. Nice set piece though from Foga Road. Yeah. Only scored four goals so far this season, Foga Road. Oh, lovely ball forward. Mundell is there. Mundell. Playing it back. And the ball inside and it goes out into touch for a goal kick. Or a corner kick rather. There was a deflection there. As if the space wasn't small enough. <laughs> yeah, that's a glancing blow. Corner kick. Let's go back to the action. Corner, corner kick. <laughs> Gav Maceo sending this one inside and Fogo Road High. Finding it difficult to clear. Our videographers do work very hard in trying to get every vantage point for our viewers. 
By the way, tell a friend, download the Sportsmax app. You can watch schoolboy football without a cost on Sportsmax Plus, which is on the Sportsmax app. So do not miss our live broadcasts of the Issa Schoolboy Football Competition. Download the Sportsmax app. I know some of you have the premium plan. You get Sportsmax anyway. But specifically for schoolboy football in Jamaica, as another opportunity comes inside the area, and Fogo Road should clear. Not too far, though. Mondo picks it up, but he has lost it. So, yeah, catch all the action on the Sportsmax app and on Sportsmax Plus in particular on the app. What schoolboy football free this season? But I would encourage you to just get the premium plan and stay tuned to Sportsmax on all the channel channels that we do have and uh, watch all of your or a lot of the best football com content, including the Champions League and the and, and La Liga and the Europa League. And that's just football. Mm. Clark giving chase. <laughs> when that boy is having fun, he has real fun, Claire Clark. And he does play some beautiful football too. Robinson. McIntosh. Being patient, Garvin Masia, smart as well. Fogarod sitting deep behind the balls, just trying to pull them out of position. And then the pass over the top. Flag going up. Blake is back here, intercepting. This parish of Clarendon has produced the most the Costa Cup winners, 24 titles out of 66 have come from the parish of Clarendon. Gavi Maceo have two of them. Clarendon College are the defending champions. So always a tough, what, two groups involving Clarendon parishes, Clarendon yep. teams, yep. schools. Very, very tough. Porous has come across in this group from Manchester. Good luck. And they've had proper hidings already this season. And they are actually in the parish of Manchester. Yep. In, in the Glenmuir group in particular. But they have come across the, to Clarendon. That's the point I'm, point I'm making. Yeah. One of the Clarendon groups, mm -hmm. just not this one. Yeah. Very strong parish. Couldn't quite keep that one in play. Smack to the face there, and uh, we'll get some treatment.
lots of support here. Excellent to see Fogo Road girls supporting their team. Fourth place, they sit currently. Just one win from their four games, a draw and two losses. But yeah, since last season, their team doing pretty well. Third in the group, their best showing in the 2022 season. And they were one match win away from qualifying for the second round. Garvey Maceo, front runners in this group, but you'd like to think that some favorable results on Fogo Road could put pressure on Veer, who currently is in second with nine points, and Kemsill, who are in third on five. Fogo Road have only played in the Costa Cup since 2012. Played for two seasons and then took a, a played for three seasons and then took a two year break. Then returned in 2018. But yeah, 2022, their best. What can they do with this attack, Fogo Road? Gav Maceo with the interception, Mondo. Sinclair. Clark operating deep now. Trying to switch the play. Somehow it went through. Bit of miscommunication there. Mentioned that Fogo Road, 16 years in existence started off with 232 students in nine classes and 19 members of staff so would have been sharing space on the Knox Community College's campus as well but they have grown in stature since then. And they've already made a name in school sports, Fogo Road, especially in track and field. Gavin Massey on the prowl here, Mundell, being challenged. Last touch off, Mundell. That was a, a good tackle. Goal kick. I was just having a look, Donald. It's actually three groups representing the parish of Clarendon, H, L, and M. The zones, Glenmuir, the front runners in one of the groups, Clarendon College in the other, and Garvey Maceo here in this group. As we said, 24 of 66 titles from the parish of Clarendon. Next best, St. James with 15, just to show you. The parish of St. James. Most of those titles, of course, would have gone to one Cornell College. Twelve of them. Yep. Herbert Morrison have two, and St. James High, one. Reed inside. Hopeful ball looking for heels. Yeah. 
Clark playing in a more central role now. Gavin Maceo in control of this one. And taking their time about the process. That's the end of the first half. Well, just one moment. A set piece, a free kick. Scored by Claire Clark, his seventh this season. The same man who scored the first time these two teams met this season. He was a difference maker then. Just the one goal, it, goal in it on that occasion. And just the one goal in it so far at Foga Road High who would consider themselves to very much still be in this contest. It's still a contest after 45 minutes, but Gav Maceo with the advantage by a goal to nil. Lots happening on the Homo Champions on Sportsmax 2 in particular. The UEFA Champions League, Tuesday afternoon, 2 o'clock, 3 p.m. ECT, Napoli will take on Real Madrid. And uh, RC Lons on Tuesday will do battle with Arsenal. That's going to be on Sportsmax, 2 p.m., 3 p.m. ECT as well. We're live. At Fogo Road High, Gavin Maceo leading the home team by a goal to nil. And the second half is set to get on the way in just a few minutes' time. But it's been mostly Gavin Maceo. They have taken the one opportunity. And uh, it was a, a set piece that I reckon should have been saved by the Fogo Road High custodian, Javon Wheatley. And uh, funny enough, he's about to make an exit, Fweetly. And uh, he's going to be replaced by Laquan Ellington. Chris Taylor is still with me in the commentary box. We'll hear thoughts from him in just a little while. But uh, certainly as, as far as the change is concerned, I am a little bit surprised with them taking out Wheatley. Yeah, it... it the mistake obviously proving costly, giving Gav Maceo High the advantage. But it may be a case of uh, another groin injury that was picked up, which would have been the second case of groin injury forcing a change by Fogger Road High uh, with Javé Cross being taken out during that first half. So the second half is about to get on the way. Fogo Road High to get the action going. And we're off. Always love to hear the new anthem of the Issa Schoolboy football season. Fogo Road High, they are known to be stubborn. Let's see what progress they can make. Brady Reed looking for the return. Didn't go his way.
Daly. McGee. Just to confirm the change with Ellington now between the sticks. Replacing Wheatley. Mundle. Williams. Ball over the top is wonderful. An opportunity for Thompson. Can he finish? It's finished wide. He got the first opportunity of the first half for Garvin Maceo Thompson. And he gets the first opportunity of the second. And he shot wayward again. Two defenders after him showed good strength but yeah skewing that wide didn't wrap his foot around that one a nice pass over the top going in from McKinley it looked like again their number three really good range of passing the Garvin must see number three and it was on show again Masio still very much in first gear as far as this game is concerned. Yeah, lots of teachers here supporting the Fogo Road team as well. It's, it's really good support. Their principal, there he is, Oret Wallace. Mr. Wallace talking to the president of the JFF, who is a Clarendon man himself, Michael Ricketts. And had affiliations with Gavin Masio too. Yeah. Chairman of the school board for some time. Chance for Gav Masio here. And Fogo Road doing enough. Players down. Two players. Was there a head collision? Maybe. So often we see principals and teachers around supporting the boys. A lot of the students here as well. Good to see Orit Wallace in his purple. Decided to get rid of the tie, take off the suit and sport the colors of his school this was a collision yeah it was nasty mm. just in that soft area mm, yeah an uppercut almost it's gonna hurt tomorrow more i think Very common in those kind of scenarios for, uh, for a cut to emerge from the front of the face. They are very soft, that area. Can bleed a lot. Usually a player that gets a hit in the back of the head comes off without a cut more times than not. Although that tends to be a little bit more dangerous, I think. I yeah, think dangerous you prefer... in terms of where the nerves yeah. are and so on. But You'd rather see cuts, blood, right? Mm, ah, well, I don't know. <laughs> well... <laughs> Anything that's not seen and it's internal, it's it's really a, a cause for speculation. Yes, right. I, I get what you meant by that statement. When, when you can see it, you feel that, you know, you can better address it. Yep. The Cubans traveling as well to support their team. Not that far away. Obviously. Gavin Monsieur just a, a, a bit further south. Maybe... Uh, 10 minute drive and, and just for the viewers who have no idea what we're talking about cubans just the nickname they don't necessarily come from cuba so when you said that they <laughs> they, they are they are not coming from far it could have been the cubans it could as have well. been the cubans as well but in this case literally 10 15 minutes away the school of course was built by the cubans it was a gift i believe hence the name the hence nickname. the name not the only school, by the way. Mm -hmm. Jose Marti, another. GC Foster College, also built by the Cubans.
two secondary level, one tertiary level. It didn't actually come off, Donald, but that's one of the things I wanted to see from Fogarud in the second half, involve their midfield a bit more. Instead of just these long passes from defence, hopeful to the forward line, they really haven't gotten anything going there. Total dominance by Gavi Masi in the middle of the park. Only one goal in it, but it probably should have been more. I, I think this could be a really good team for next season. So many of your players are, are really young, Fogarud High, providing that they are not taken. But if this lot stay together, they do have the ambition uh, to create further trouble. Yeah, last year they would have finished third in the group and hopes are pretty high. But even a few of us would have been surprised with their journey last year. But that's a wonderful ball inside the box. Can they finish? Surely straight to the keeper. He hits it straight to the keeper, Neon Clark. Lovely move. No surprise that Brooks had a big deal to do with it. Now he goes the other way. And uh, Cleo Clark couldn't quite get it. That was close for Vogel Road High, wasn't it? Good work on the left by Brooks. Scrumptious ball inside the air, and Clark maybe had too much time. Thought about it. He took too long. Yeah. Took too long. Had he taken a shot earlier, he could have gone far post with the strike and had lots of space but he took a touch and all of a sudden a couple of defenders were in front of him in front of him as well it's the second time that Fogo Road have opened up Gavi Masir from the wide areas no surprise this man their player to watch Brooks well here is again a big part of it Brooks delightful ball inside and the header is wide Brooks was bewitching on the left Providing a wonderful ball again inside the box. But how have they not scored there? Neon Clark, it looked like with a finish. Brooks, lovely delivery. No, it actually it was their number nine, Hales. Javon Hales, who's already scored one so far this season of their four goals. That should have been his second of the season. Hard into the ground and over the top. Well, looked like he closed his eyes there. <laughs> Did Javon Hales? Well, to be fair, he could have. <laughs> Again, Brooks in the thick of things. One of the survivors from last season. Yep. A goal and an assist so far this season for Brooks. Same there. They had a good little team that could do well next year, but on the back of that comment, two big chances. Their main attacking threat from last season and MVP, Tragic Woolcock, no longer the in no longer in the squad in the team at the school. This one was ambitious to say the least. Well, that was a clearance. Worrying signs, though, it must be said, for Meron Gordon. Not much in the build-up of those attacks, and yet his defence opened up. And had it been better finishing, he might have been down 2-1. And they are lacking a little bit of an ambition and imagination when they are in the attacking third so far in this second half. Can they manufacture something now? No, they cannot. Thompson going to keep that one in play. Reed Sinclair kept it in play clear Clark on it Clark is heading to the byline and uh, didn't have a lot of room to work with the results not what he wanted Come on, 
That wasn't the best distribution. Thompson on it. Had a glimpse up and saw that Mundell and uh, Clark were waiting. Subs warming up for Gav Maceo. Yeah. And you could hear coming through the microphones there, Clear Clark not happy with the service on that occasion coming in from Thompson was saying to him why not choose the easier method and use the inside of your foot to square the ball to cross the ball instead of his instep went horribly wrong for him the number nine Thompson remains down too but play continues to so Gav Masia with 10 players at the moment Referee saying play on, and so they do. Gav Maceo, this is Devon McIntosh. No way. There's Thompson. Still on the park, you know. <laughs> and he's been told to slide off. In, actually, he... He's now replaced. Yeah, O'Brien coming on for him. Omarion O'Brien. Two changes for Gavi Maceo. Jaheim Niederman for Devani McIntosh. Trying to send the ball out wide, but was caught in the follow through. And a yellow card is being brandished to Brady Reed. And I'm not sure why, if I'm to be honest, because unless he did something afterwards that we couldn't spot, let's take a look at it again. I'll leave it to you, Chris Taylor, because I'm not sure exactly where he was expected to go. In the aftermath of that, Delton Brooks. Yeah. So the captain in the book could only have been the follow through, but I must say he was clearing the ball, and I'm not sure what Williams was trying to achieve by just charging into him and brought the tackle on himself. Flag will go up for offside here. Easy call.
Got a, a bad crowd in here at Fogo Road High as the players get some refreshments. Really love to be, really lovely to be here at Fogo Road High. And uh, just the environment on a school day, just brilliant to soak in. Gerard Morisili has been around the area and uh, he's been speaking to the locals and uh, we'll hear from him just a little while as he tells us well he's been around the area around the school so to speak So, Gerard, what have you been hearing? Thank us a lot, Donald, of course. Yeah, I've been having a, a, a bit of a chat with some of the locals around here, as you mentioned before. And I learned a lot about this school, particularly Fogo Road High. Now, you can see that there are a lot of walls around here uh, in this Fogo Road community. Now, this is, that's because this was supposed to be a stadium. Initially, the building, plan, the building plans where we are standing right here watching this football, this was supposed to be a stadium. However, that was under the PNP government back in the 1970s. In 1980, when the JLP took over, of course, the Cubans then being declared persona non grata, and they were sent back to Cuba, which halted the process, as you can see, this breakaway here. I'll let you take over from this, Donald. Yeah, so that opportunity goes a begging. But yeah, that was supposed to this was supposed to be a stadium. That's why you can see the wall around us. However, the school concept came about when the Fogo Road community members wanted another secondary school option for the tons of primary school children that leave the vicinity. They would have only had Denby High, Glenmuir, Kimso further down the road and Garvey Massey, of course, to choose from. But then the Fogo Road option came into play giving them another chance to get to another school of course for the plethora of primary school students around here and then this ground this area this entire land spot which used to be a factory and produced a lot of manufacturing goods that became this became the perfect place for them to build this Fogo Road High School so that is how we came about and this is why we're here the first time of course we are broadcasting any type of the Costa Cup football from this this venue And that history lesson was brought to you courtesy of Gerard Morisili. Thanks, Gerard. Yeah, that first, when it first opened, a little under 300 students were on, enrolled. But it is a, a wonderful community. And as I said, they've been making their name more and more in, in sports. At the, at the, it's a level, of course. And in track and field in particular. Gav Masia looking for a second here. Kept alive, but uh, easily nodded away. That's a magnificent turn. Wonderful stuff. Try to supply the pass. Why not a shot from O'Brien there? Good skill to cut it on to the left hand side. Had lots of space to shoot. Look at how he turned. Beautiful. Then the skill to cut in. He's got to be shooting there, though. The pass certainly wasn't on. O'Brien, goal shy. Kempsill, they've had, well, Fogo Road High, they've had a, a couple of opportunities in the second half. And I think, I must say, they've been fortunate. A couple of slip ups at the back. And uh, composure letting down Fogo Road High. But they're still in it. I feel they're still in it. Gav Masse will be very lucky if they just win by the, the odd goal. Free kick to Fogo Road High.
Yeah, Maron Gordon busy on his bench. He's already made two substitutions. Maybe some more. Ball punted to the edge of the box, headed away. It's an ambitious pass from Clark. Yeah, looking for O'Brien. Fogaro doing a much better job in this second half, committing more players forward. That's the well, way. Brooks inside or outside to Navar Brooks. Brooks and Brooks, eh? Delton to Navar. Well, there is going to be another pause. Uh, the official water break is here, and uh, the players will refresh themselves. Always interesting to hear what they say, the coaches, to their players as they try to make the next move. Kemsil, of course, trailing the team in yellow by, I keep on saying Kemsil, Foga Road trailing the team in yellow Seems by like a goal to nil. Anxious for a Kemsil game, you might get your wish later I, I, on. <laughs> yeah, we may just get it. Of course, the Brooks on the field for uh, Fogger Road High. They are brothers with the captain, the younger of the two. Yeah. Delton. Player to watch the older brother. Mm. Here's Delton. The younger of the two. Nice link up player about 30 seconds ago. And the big brother providing the best chance for Fogo Road in we, the second half. We can't say that Fogo Road have created the biggest chances in this game. Well, yeah. Hmm. I mean, there was a chance for Thompson, the first chance of the game yeah. inside the area, which he went for the acrobatic finish and it went over the top. But apart from that... I, but I still really maintain the yeah. biggest chances have gone to Fogo, Fogo Road. Road. Yeah. And all those chances have come in the second half. Indeed. A much better performance by the team in purple. Still can't find a goal, though. Goals have been hard to come by for Fogaro. Just four in four games. And still, they're looking for one in their fifth. They are definitely an improving school. You look back to 2012, their first year in the Costa Cup. Gavi Masia destroyed them by four goals to nil. And then you think of their last match early this season in September. Just a one nil victory. You, and then look at this one as well. As you said, Fogo Road have had the better opportunities. Could easily have been 2-1 Fogo Road yeah. here in the second half. Easily. So, yeah. They, they have gone down 4 nil a couple of times to Gavi Masia, so... And they haven't registered a, a win no, in recent times or even a seven. draw. No, seven from seven for Gavi Maceo over the last 11 years. But here's Fogger Road. 
getting the better of the chances in the second half. Getting a little bit more possession as well in the second half. In fact, I'll go further to say that this is the eighth match between these two teams, and Fogo Road have only managed to score once. While conceding 17. Oh, tall almost. Perfect. Forced a little bit wide, though, Clark. Lovely stuff. Magnificent almost. Scooted wide. Did it skim the upright? It did. Looking to bend it into the far corner. Intelligent play by Cleo Clark. Strong on the left-hand side. Off the upright. Just see it here. Yeah, just shave the outside of it. Goalkeeper exposed. Oof. And two inches to the right, and it would have been a goal. Government here just reminding Fogo Road High of uh, their quality. Almost went through. O'Brien almost got it. Needham inside. Williams sends it across to Robinson. Trying to switch the play. Good defensive header away. Needham. Ball touched inside. The whistle goes. And the call went against Mundle, I believe. just on the edge of the area. Calm and composed until that final pass, but they do get it again. This is Reed, lovely stuff. Oh, they give up possession too easily, but they'll get it back. And Reed has it. Poked forward. Brooks trying to turn it the other way. Strong interception. <laughs> Brooks did enough on that occasion, didn't he? Well, even referee Okita Nicholson was wondering what happened there. Gav Maceo player is down. Play continues though. Well, he totally misread that. And Mundle is through. Mundle moving away from the challenges and trying to thread that through to clear Clark. O'Brien though, trying to win it back but couldn't. Lost it to Brooks. Gav Maceo, don't mind starting it again from the back. Changes in the back line for Gavi Maceo this season as well. No Sherwin Thomas was their main man in defence. Was a cricketer as well, right? Yeah, his brother. And also the brother of a... Of O'Shane Thomas, yep. the West Indies cricketer, fast bowler. Sherwin a fast bowler in his own right he's now left high school but yeah he was a main man in the back line solid back line they had as well yeah Malik Robinson who's one of their center backs that was in the central midfield role last season as well in the holding midfield area now has to be one of the centre-backs this season as Gav Masaya coming forward through Needham. Looking for the one-two, gets it back. Needham forcing the shot away. And there wasn't a lot of power behind it. Other the Costa Cup matches going on. McGrath and Dintil locked at one apiece. Tenby leading Porus by five goals to nil. I'm sure Dunstan Cohen must have been amongst those goals. One of the leading goal scorers in the schoolboy competition this season. At halftime, Black River 
lead Mannings by a goal to nil. Mannings, finalist in 2021, semi-finalist in 2022. Mm. Black River making a match of it. Here's Governor Masir looking for a second. And that pass was a little bit disappointing. He may have hurt himself in the process. And he's going to require some attention now. I think he was holding the back of his knee there. Also Oops, down is Nevar Brooks. And Marin Garden goes to the bench again. Another double change. Christopher Mundell, his time is up. As his number goes up. So to Conroy Con Williams as well, yeah. Ronaldinho Douglas comes on. And so to Everell Swaby. Kemsil also making a, a Foga Road high. If I say Kemsil one more time, I, I don't understand. Do they wear, wear, wear purple as well? Must have been a dream. Foga Road high. The, yeah, they do wear red and blue, which if you put together forms. Go on. <laughs> Foga Road high with a, a double change as well. If Kemsil is not on the fixture this season, they certainly have to be inserted now. <laughs> or maybe, maybe I should say another Kemsil game. Yeah, there was a Kemsil Veer fixture which we did already this season, yeah, Donald Oliver. Yeah, yes, yes, we did. Did you call that game? I, I did call that game, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it's a long-lasting memory, is it? Kemsil actually currently sits third in this group, behind Veer and Gavi Maceo. Changes that came on for Foga Road High. We're going to confirm in just a little while. Antonio Darby, one of the attacking midfielders. Yeah, already has an assist this season. Darby, where's the number 15? Trying to win the ball there's Derby puts in the tackle played over to that far side and uh, Hale's trying to keep that one in place he's now gone out wide to accommodate Armstrong Armstrong who has uh, moved in a, in a more central area 
Yeah, Anthony Armstrong, one of the goal scorers this season for Fogo Road. Goals rare for them. He has one of them, the number six. They certainly need goals. I've had a couple of really good opportunities in the second half, and they haven't made it count. You just have to against teams of the caliber of Gavi Masir, who are the group leaders as well. Well, here is Gav Masir trying to progress, but unable to do so. He's in an offside position, but the ball didn't reach him. Nevar Brooks. And the flag goes up again. This time against Gav Masir. And uh, let's take a look at the Sportsmax app moment of the game. Courtesy of the Sportsmax app, of course, and the goal in this one. Clear clock with the free kick. People would be a little bit disappointed uh, that he wasn't able to push that one around the post. But uh, Clark getting his seventh of the season. And that's the Sportsmax app moment of the game, courtesy of the Sportsmax app, reminding you that schoolboy football is free on the Sportsmax app, on Sportsmax Plus. We know many of you have the premium plan, but you can tell a friend that they can download the Sportsmax app, click on Sportsmax Plus, and watch schoolboy football action from Jamaica free of charge. Well, there's... Well, here's an opportunity now uh, with Reed trying to play that one inside. It's a chance here, and what a challenge. Wonderful challenge there. And Fogger Road's opportunity gone. It was Robinson with the challenge he's put in a, a shift today i believe malik robinson you better believe it mcgee here's robinson again there's Fogger road again trying to go through the gears here Ball played upfield. Just a little bit too much on it. Yeah, I'm not sure why he didn't turn. Had Cleo Clark with him, decided to go wide. Look at this challenge here from Robinson. Kept his eye on the ball. Just look at his eyes. That's a brilliant challenge by Robinson. He was certainly exposed, and so was his goalkeeper. Yep, Shot Javon was Hills. On target. Yep, was bearing down Javon Hills. Excellent from Robinson. Opportunity for Gavmeseo, oh, wonderful stuff, but just losing it at the very end. It's, it's a little things going against Fogo Road at times. top Navar Brooks has it has some help hails with the shot and again not a lot of power behind it there was a clip though you know did look towards the referee thought he was fouled 
I'm not sure if the thought process was that there was a touch. Dalton Brooks deciding to go back to his back line. There's a handleball there. Ball played through. Reed. As I said, it's the little things. Look just not on their side. Brady Reed, they are not able to control it. Crowd see the funny side of things, but again, that ball over the top causing problems for Garvey Mosey in this second half. Brooks was chasing it as well, but decided to leave it for Reed. And well, Reed left it alone himself. Another change. For Garvey Maceo, Livingston Donaldson comes on for Anthony Sinclair. Just trying to shore up the middle of the park, Marin Gordon. Play through. That's a lovely first touch. The shot left a lot to be desired, but the, the first touch was wonderful. Gav Masil. Too much on it. Just manages to keep it in play, but it'll go the other way. Foga Road switching it. Reed cutting that one back into traffic and Gav Maceo trying to win it back. Oh, that's wonderful, the turn from Brooks. Yeah, can't find a purple shirt, though. Mm. Five minutes of stoppage is done. Huh? Still time for Foga Road. Gav Masi, of course, will be looking for the killer blow. This may be it. Clark. Ball played inside. Gav Masi couldn't quite maneuver it. Yeah. You mentioned Clark. He must be in the running for the MVP. Probably the man on top of the list at this point. The difference maker so far. Here he goes again. Trying to thread that one through. He's had quite a few of the best opportunities. That will be a booking. Or will it? it? It will, but they'll go back to that as he tried to play the advantage. Here's a shot from distance straight to the goalkeeper. No issues there for Frischmar Maxwell. 
Well, the yellow card wasn't actually shown, was it? No, but I'm sure when once the ball goes out to play, Livingston Donaldson will pick it up. Oh, that's lovely. And uh, the shot from distance. Again, not a lot of power behind from Omari and O'Brien. Ellington does look more confident than Wheatley between the sticks. Hasn't been tested much, but doesn't look nervous at all when the ball is coming to him. Foga Road, can they get a goal in the final few minutes of this one? Searching ball for Clear Clark, who is offside. It's actually O'Brien on that left hand oh, side. Yes, O'Brien, it is on that left. There's a yellow card. <laughs> Donaldson probably thought he, has it, he had escaped it. Not to be. Javon Hills exits the arena. Replaced by Jashane Dyer in stoppage time. lovely speed but then going into a bit of traffic less than two minutes to go flag goes up for offside easy call Clark delivering that one inside the area. Fogarud having difficulty to clear. That's a foul. Yeah, at this point, you think Garvin Maceo, with their experience, has probably eased the threat of Fogarud. Let's see. Majority of the possession for them and having a ball in an attacking position mostly. And Cleo Clark has definitely been the best player on the park for Garvin Maceo. Robinson, a couple telling tackles there, number five. But overall, over the 90 minutes, Cleo Clark, his goal as well as the opportunities he created and probably should have finished a couple more, been the best player for the Cubans. Handled ball against Omari and O'Brien. Last chance saloon possibly. Do they have enough time for the road? They need they need to commit more bodies up. Couldn't find a purple shirt. Again. And Gavin Maceo, they have it. And the ball is over the top. And the question is, can they finish? Well, the game is finished. And they have done enough. Gav Maceo had to work hard, especially in that second half. But clear Clark's goal in the first stanza of this game, proving to be the difference between the teams in our first televised match from Foga Road. Foga Road High School. They would be relatively pleased with their performances. They had the opportunities, especially, especially in that second half. Had a couple of big moments, but could not convert. But uh, 
It's an institu institution that's growing in stature, especially at the schoolboy football level. And they were not ashamed at the end of it all here. Gav Maceo with the victory by one goal to nil. So the full match highlights. Garvey Maceo, the visitors in their full yellow. On the front foot early, Christopher Mundell into the area. Delana Thompson, the chance to finish, couldn't hit the target. Their number nine went for the acrobatic finish and kicked underneath the ball over the top. Cleo Clark got in his stride, then produced this kind of skill. Just needed a better finish here to keep it under the crossbar. But lovely how he created space and the opportunity for himself. Whoops, onto the right hand side. And the shot a bit disappointing from the leading goal scorer of Garvey Maceo. A strike from way out, over the top from Robinson. And then this free kick with the left foot, Clear Clark, seventh of the season. Second against Fogo Road this season. Into the back of the net, weakly, not across in time. And that came after 21 minutes. And this beautiful cross field pass by McKinley, their number three. And the first touch from Clear Clark was very good then the strike on target and weakly got enough on it just to pour it over the bar Fogo Road they created an opportunity for themselves probably the only one in that first half but couldn't hit the target they had zero shots on target after the first half that one from Brady Reed and he just couldn't get it done then the start of the second half and they had two really good chances this the first and it was cut down. Brooks into the area. Nice pass it was from Brooks. And just took too long with the finish, did Neon Clark. And eventually the chance went. Then Brooks again on the left hand side. This time decided to deliver with the right boot. Look at that for a ball. And what a miss it was. Very disappointing. Fogger Road could easily have been 2 1 up. Within 10 minutes of the second half, it was not to be. Cleo Clark. Best play on show today, using his skill off the upright, looking to bend it into the far corner. The right decision from a man who's played at the Premier League level with Cavalier, Cleo Clark. And it was enough, his goal for three points. So, yeah. Five shots on target from their 14 attempts for Garvey Maceo, the two-time champions. It was enough against the home team, Fogo Road, who just had two shots on target, both coming in the second half, but not good enough, not able to penetrate the goal of Garvey Maceo. Only one goal they have managed in eight attempts against Garvey Maceo. They had four saves, two corners as well, Fogo Road. The majority of the possession went to Garvey Maceo, and all the goals here at Fogo Road High. 1-0 Garvey Maceo after 90 minutes. They confirmed their position atop of the group. Let's hear from our water player of the match, who is with Gerard, none other than Cleo Clark, the captain. Thank you so much, Chris. Yeah, Cleo Clark, the water man of the match, about to hand him the trophy. Congratulations to you, Cleo. Yeah. And let me just ask you quickly, though, how much would you rate this performance out of 10? Um, I would rate it 8%. 8%. Uh, I mean, you, you did see though that you had a few chances that you would have created. Of course, you were satisfied with the goal that you would have gotten. But if you look back at the chances you created, what would you have done differently to ensure that you scored more? Well, um, I think I have more space with the ball. Could have bring it further um, and pick a better um, angle. Yeah, you have 42 goals now in your schoolboy football career. Season, uh, career. How happy are you with that, and how far are you looking to get? Well, um, I'm pretty happy because I'm. Um, can say I'm in the, in the book because I have 42 goals in my um, Dakasta Cup. I think I can bring it further this season. Um, how far do you think you can bring it? 
a lot. <laughs> All right, Cleo, congratulations to you. Well yeah, done, congratulations thanks. on the win as well. So that was Cleo Clark, the water player of the match. Let's hear now from the coach of Fogger Road. Coach, not the result you would have wanted though, but when you look back at how your team would have played today, how good was it? It was fairly good. Um, I think our goalkeeper made laps and um, cost us a one goal. Um, however, we weren't brave enough. If we were just a little bit braver, um, we could have gotten something out of this goal. This game, we created quite a few um, quality chances that we should have at least scored one today. Yeah, you would have been forced to change keepers. Uh, what do you think about that substitution? How did that work in your favour? Well, the two changes, you know, um, we have quality players on the bench. So, it wasn't as if we are sending out a weaker team with the change. Because those players are quality players. Um, the goalkeeper has kept, like, the first two games for us and he did extremely well so it's just that he went on last week with the flu so we just gave the other keeper another game today but both, both goalkeepers are good goalkeepers so we weren't worrying just that one got injured so we'll pull him out and put in the other all right coach one more quickly you have three more games remaining in the first round how do you go from here well we're just focusing on the next game and at three points in the next game is a must for us if we are thinking about qualifying for the for the next round I mean, this zone is a competitive zone. Anybody can win on any day. So we really have to just focus on ourselves. And um, if we are able to win the next game, we'll move on from there without even thinking about the final two games. Hi, right, Coach. Thank you so much and hard luck today. Emma, you're most welcome. Yeah, that was the coach from Fogaro. Now we have a chat with Man Gordon as he embraces his opponent. Coach Gordon, 1 0. Of course, at the start of the game, you would have said that you would have wanted a better result, but are you satisfied with the three points? Definitely, every coach will be satisfied with three points, but um, I think Foga Road had a, had a very, very good um, second half. They came out, you know, but when you're just leading by a goal, especially in a, in a Carinan game, you know, it's going to be always tough. I think they, they did much better than us in the second half. They were more direct than us second half. They are more purposeful than us in the second half. I think we, we adapted to their game, and I think that was, was our downfall. Um, first half, I think we have a little bit more control over the game. Second half, we, we, we allowed Foga to, to impose what they want on us, and I think um, they did well, but we are really happy for the three points. Yeah, do you think that you were able to create enough chances in this game, though? Yeah, um, when you're playing a game like this, you have to try and win it from the first half, you know, and I think we created a number of chances in the first half where we should have won the game, but, you know, such is a game. These are youngsters, and I'm really proud of them. Um, I think the captain today really led from front um, with how he played. And a few chances that I think he should have buried, you know, with a, a player, a player of his standard. But we're happy for the three points, happy for the team effort. And we just move on. Yeah, you moved to 15 points now, very close to qualifying for the second round, uh, to 13 points rather. Uh, they're, they're very close behind you, but do you think that's how it's going to stay now from here on in just three games remaining? Yeah, man, I think that game that we drew against Kemsil really was, was, was our turning point in terms of letting the game get it in the table be very close. Um, but. In, in this in this parish, though, you know, any team can turn up and play. Um, I always say that you have teams in this parish who don't come out of the round, which I think they would have probably win a, a, a different group. You know, it's a, it's a tough place to play. It's very good for the boys, very competitive. And I really love what today looked like. Um, I think, you know, it wasn't a walkover for anyone, for, for us. You know, it was very, very tough for us. Fogar Road really did well. All right, Coach, thank you so much. And well done today. Yeah, man, thank you. Thanks for having me. So, just the result here. Gav Maceo, 1 0 away to Foga Road. And, uh, well, they pick up another three points here. Gav Maceo, they're still top of Zone M. Having played five matches, winning four, drawing one. They're on 13 points. Veer in second spot. Uh, they've played a game less. They're on nine points. And uh, Kemsil, <laughs> they are on five points. Foga Road in fourth position still on four points still some way to go but let's see how this zone pans out the ssfl premiership on sports max 2 saturday 2 30 p.m 3 30 p.m ect trinity college east will square off with malik secondary you don't want to miss that one on sports max 2 this saturday afternoon and schoolboy football action on saturday Hold the Trinity High against St. Catherine High with the pre-game show beginning at 1 o'clock Jamaica time, 2 p.m. ECT. You can watch it on Sportsmax and on Scene TV. And remember, it's free on Sportsmax Plus on the app. 
and then this is going to be a big one on Sportsmax 2. St. Andrew Technical up against Excelsior High. 3.30 p.m. kickoff, 4.30 p.m. in the Eastern Caribbean. That's St. Andrew Technical. Stats, last year's beaten finalists, they're going up against Excelsior High. And uh, the home of champions will be live from the Anthony Spalding Sports Complex. And we're looking uh, forward to that one the battle of former champions in the Manning Cup. But just to remind you here, Gavin Maceo, with the 1-0 advantage, the 1-0 win over Foga Road here at the Foga Road High School. It's been a pleasure bringing this to you. The Cubans continue their trek as they aim to make a mark in the Issa Da Costa Cup. On behalf of Chris Taylor, my analyst, uh, my producer, Phil Riley, director, Michael Edwards, and the hard-working production team, it's goodbye from the Parish of Clarendon for the final time. Yo, Issa, a school boy football look this season. People them ready, you know. All right then, Pico, Manning Cup, hold it for your shield, you make we link up. We watch the champions cup, Ben Francis, water cup, which team are win the championship this season. Yo, Issa, for one day, for school, I got finished the league and beat now. Which you that got collect the golden boat and be the favorite for the people. Yo, Issa, me the fans are roll out all boat. Looking at the crowd, bus load of supporters from school and community too. People nothing at the stand, some are the superior, they must have watched it on TV too. Country and town, you know, it's the one reason. Issa, schoolboy football, run come, look one, look all. Which team are the best of the government and the best of the